Today, I just need to have a rant. There's a few things I've noticed with watch companies and manufacturers that just hasn't sat quite right with me. And I was debating on whether I make this video or not because I always think, oh, I don't want to make a negative video. I want this channel to be celebrating the joy and awesomeness of timepieces. But sometimes you just got to let it out. And that's what we're doing today. I know, this is such a geeky thing to be complaining about, but it's really been getting my goats. Misleading movement information. <laughs> I really, really hate misleading movement information or when it feels almost deceptive. So when a brand or manufacturer is using an off-the-shelf movement like a Salida, ETA, Miota, but they make it difficult to understand because they call it the caliber this or that, which is really just code for it's an off-the-shelf movement, but we've modified the rotor or we added this or changed that. It is a brand trying to make their movement seem in-house when really they've just given a name to their modified A Bosch movement. The big brand that comes to mind with this is Hublot. One of the big reasons why watch geeks tend to be standoffish, to put it nicely, about Hublot is because they're overpriced for what they are with ETA or Salida movements in some of their pieces that they aren't very clear about. Hey guys, Editing Brittany here. Now I've spent too long researching Hublot to not be more specific here. Hublot has a number of their own in-house movements, some of them fantastic with the Unico being the most widely used. But they still do use other movements, namely Zenith, probably since they're both subsidi subsidiaries of LVMH. The Hub 4700 is the Zenith El Primero 400, and the Hub 1710 is the Zenith Elite 670. My problem is, you wouldn't know this from their communications unless you did some real geeky digging. For me, I don't mind if something isn't 100% designed in-house, or even if it has a Salida, ETA, whatever, based movement. Just be honest with people. There's nothing wrong with an Abosh movement. Just don't hide your movement information behind a caliber reference. Some brands that come to mind for me who are upfront about their movement information are brands like Oris, Fears, Christopher Ward. They tell you exactly what movement is in their watches, no smoke and mirrors. I made a video recently about in-house movements and the facade of it. I don't mind if something isn't in-house, but I do mind if people are being misled on what this movement actually is. Right, we're not even halfway through and I already feel like I'm doing too much whinging. <laughs> Let's take a break from ranting and talk about a watch that I love and a collab that's making me so dang happy. The new IFL drop just released today, right now. And it's actually the watch I'm wearing right now. The limited edition Cassioke Octo. And they're also the sponsors of today's video. So thank you so much, IFL. So if you're not as familiar with IFL, they are playful watch artists. They customize awesome watches, and this one is no different. This new drop, the Cassioke Octo, pays tribute to the octagonal case shape and bezel of the Cassioke with a hand-painted ocean scene, there's coral reefs, and of course, an octopus. I love it so much. <laughs> it's so awesome. As always, these are hand-painted, but the customization doesn't stop there. So they've customized the bezel, chapter ring, and index to give this a brighter look. These are limited to 150 pieces and are priced at 1,190 euros for a true wearable piece of art. If you're looking for something a bit different, a bit funky, you gotta check out IFL. To see this watch, I've got my own custom link in my description. Go click that so they know I sent you. Or it doesn't even have to be this watch. If you just want to check out anything from IFL, go click that link. And thank you so much to IFL for sponsoring this video. Okay, this is something I've only just cottoned on to because I'm in the market to buy a neo vintage Alonga Nzona. Did you like that pronunciation, Germans? <laughs> they hated it. I could feel it already. I want to buy a neo vintage ALS 1815. I love this watch. Look how good it looks on me. And no one likes servicing costs, okay? It's one of those unfortunate parts that comes along with watch ownership. Watches are little machines, and machines need servicing to make sure they are operating properly and in good form. But I've heard a few too many horror stories from people about longer servicing experiences and prices. I've seen one internet story as I started researching Longa on the message boards. So take this with a massive grain of salt 
It was on the message board. <laughs> I'll put the story up right now. I should be able to find it. But they sent their watch to Longa for a servicing. It's a Longa one, a, a simple Longa one, so no complication. It is just a day date. They were quoted 8,300 euros for the servicing. And for an optional case polishing and dial change, it would be an additional 1,900 euros. Over 10,000 euros for servicing a simple Longa one. <laughs> Was there more to it? There must be more to this. I don't know. <laughs> but still, keep in mind, that's just someone on the message boards. I don't know this person. And you might be thinking, well, Longa is a very reputable high horology brand. Don't be cheap, Brittany. Hey guys, editing Brittany here again. And I'm afraid it's probably not gonna be my last time in this video either. But my microphone cut out here for whatever reason, so what a fun surprise. I was saying, I hear you. Of course, services aren't gonna be really, really cheap, especially on these higher horology brands. But that servicing is astronomical, and I just wish this was an isolated incident because I'm just hearing too much more. Uh, here's another story. I have an Instagram watch nerd friend called 1111 Prince. If you head over to his Instagram, you will see his Longa Nightmare. The TLDR version is, he has a datagraph, serviced it in 2021, hardly wears it, and it is under warranty until 2023. One day he's winding the watch and suddenly the crown just comes off. He thinks, okay, not ideal, but it's still covered under warranty. That's what it's there for. The watch gets sent off to Glass Huta and they insist it is a fault of his. He must have banged it in some way. He explains, you know, I barely wear this watch. It was just serviced and it hasn't been dropped or anything. They do not accept this answer. It's no longer covered under warranty as they say it is a fault of his own and he's given a bill of 2,800 pounds. If you want to go see more of his saga, hear from him, go check out the 1111 Prince Instagram. Now these are just internet people. This isn't gospel. This isn't my experience. This is just hearsay. So please don't sue me, Longa. These are just stories I've been seeing, hearing, reading, but it's just coming from a few too many sources to chalk it up to one angry or upset customer. It's, it's coming from too many people and too many experiences. So yeah, this is all just gossip. So I thought, let's call the Longa Boutique. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Let's stop listening to everyone. Let's give them a call. So I called the London Longa Boutique to receive the pricing on servicing the little Longa one. And I was quoted a, a very reasonable, normal price. So it was 900 pounds for the movement servicing and 650 pounds for a polishing. Very reasonable and normal servicing prices of a higher end watch. So there's not much I can really say about the servicing stories I've been hearing. But I gotta say, and the reason I, I, I bring up ALS specifically is that their reputation for hidden fees and service servicing prices being much higher than people expected, their reputation is not good. And it brings me no joy to say this. I can't tell if it's like buying an airline ticket when the original advertised price is one thing and then by the end at the checkout it costs three times more. I don't know, I can't say for certain, I don't have a longa or had one serviced, but it is making me think twice right now as, as I look at them. The general advice I've been given from a few longa owners who have gone through a servicing and, and some of this nightmare is buyer beware. Hey guys, editing Brittany here, and I swear this is my last time coming in. It's also late at night and I'm in my house coat and I need you to not judge me right now. I feel like I need to say this isn't every Longa servicing experience. I've read so many great servicing experiences, particularly in North America. There must be like a great servicing center in North America because all the horror stories I hear seem to be UK based. So I'm not sure if the system's different in Europe versus North America, I don't know. I just need to say it's not everyone. It's just a ratio that seems really high and has me second guessing if I'll get that long up. Well, I, 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 I still will. <laughs> I'll, still, I'll still get it and then I can come to you with my own long of servicing experience because I just love it so much. I'm gambling. But it is worth knowing that many people have had kind of bad servicing experiences. One other horror story is from the Watch Enthusiast London YouTube channel. I'll link it down below. It's like half an hour long, so it's a bit of a commitment. <laughs> but it only furthers the awful stories I've been hearing about Longa and their customer support. Sad times. 
It, it really brings me no joy to say this because I love the 1815, this little neo vintage number I found specifically. It brings me no joy that it's making me think twice about buying this watch. And I really hope that I'm wrong. I, I hope that all the stories I've been hearing are freak stories. Let me know in those comments down below if I'm getting the wrong end of everything, because I would love to be wrong. Longa is a brand I would love to work with. I would love to have a great relationship with them. I would love to own their watches, but I'm scared to right now. <sighs> okay, I had to get this off my chest. Let's close this book. Let's stop being negative. Back to joyful videos. Thank you for listening to my rant. I feel like I'm being so whingy and whiny. Do you guys have anything that's been really bugging you in the watch world lately? Let me know in those comments. I'd love to read them. Thank you, IFL, for sponsoring this video. You freaking legends. Go click that link. Peace. All right, it's that magical time of the video where we thank the Pope to your patrons. Should we do a unflattering angle? Oh my gosh, my hat completely blocks out my eyes. Could you see my eyes in this video? I do have eyes, so. But this has nothing to do with eyes. Uh, thank you, Pope Tier patrons. At the end of the video, Pope Tier patrons always get a special shout out. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. You guys help keep the lights on here at Gringa HQ. Thank you all to your patrons, but most specifically, the Pope Tier patrons. Sorry, I'm not singing on this one. I gotta arrest my vocal cords. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.